Hello, this is Jenny from Designs of Paper. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. Are you ready for a card video? Because I got a card video for you. I am using pattern paper. I have lots and lots and lots of pattern paper and I really need to stop hoarding it and start using it. So I am going to use the diagonal stripes of this page, the polka dots, maybe the chevrons, spoiler alert, I don't use them the cameras and the yellow on the back of the camera. So it's kind of a yellow grid. And I'm going to be using this light blue color as a card base. I have pulled out this gray color as a mat, and I will be using a coral, a gray, and a blue to make some focal images on the front of my card. I've got a gray ink pad. I have this die set, which is, I will use these balloon dies to create the focal image. I have a birthday word die because this is going to become a birthday card and this happy stamp. This is a group of stamps I per that I got from Tailored Expressions from one of their um, online um, card classes. So I have taken these four cards, pattern papers and the gray card stock and the blue card stock. Wow, words, and I cut them all down. So my blue card stock is four and a quarter inches by 11 inches tall. The gray one is four and a quarter by five and a half. And I now have a pile of strips of paper that are four by five and a quarter inches cut in half lengthwise and then cut not in half height wise so that I have a long and a short of each paper. And I'm just gonna kind of fidget with it here and figure out how I want to line this up. I want four different patterns on the front of this card front, and I want there to be gray, I don't kind of like grout lines <laughs> in between the each piece of paper. I want it to look as though each of these little rectangles has been matted with its with a, a piece of gray paper, even though they're all on the same piece of paper. Um oh, sorry, my kids and my husband are making lots of noise. Sorry if you can hear that. I'm just kind of fidgeting around. I didn't cut them exactly in half, so some are a little bit bigger than others, and you know, it is what it is. This is generally how it's going to look. So I am going to use my ATG gun and my supersonic speed to lay out these pieces of pattern paper. You know, sometimes I wish I could move this fast in real life. I could get so much accomplished in one day if I had a fast forward button. <laughs> I have so much more time to craft and play if I could fast forward through the need to do's like, you know, the giant pile of laundry that I perpetually have to fold. <laughs> I did kind of um, have to do some fidgeting once I got them all down. It looked like this one wasn't straight. And then once I got that one back on, the yellow one didn't look straight. And in reality, they probably neither one of them were straight. But now that they are eyeball looking straight, <laughs> I can let them be and move on to the next step. So here's what we've got so far. We've got our card base and our card front, and I'm liking this geometric look to it. And I'm ready to add the birthday element. So I will be using one of these two smallest balloon dies. Um, I wasn't exactly sure until I got them opened. Couldn't remember how big that second to the smallest one actually was, but it's way too big for the card front. So I am gonna go ahead and just use that littlest one and voila, three little balloons. Okay, so here comes the fidgety part of the cards that sometimes make my my eyes roll as I am editing the footage going, why did you do that? Like for real, why did you do it that way? Do you always have to choose the hardest way to do things? Yes, the answer is yes. I always have to choose the hardest way <laughs> to do the things. Okay, I have figured out where my balloons are going to go, but I need to stamp my sentiment. So this is a little drawer organizer box I found at a store called at home and it keeps all of my scraps of paper the front half of the box are the less than card front sizes and the back half of the box are the card front sizes love them it just keeps it right on my desk nice and organized by color and the stamp I am going to use is a red rubber stamp so I do not need the black mouse pa mouse pad part of my misty wow say that 10 times fast I will be stamping the word happy in a Stampin' Up! Gray, I think it's called, I don't know what it's called, it's a gray. It's called uh, Basic Gray. Yeah, it's called Basic Gray. <laughs> I will be stamping that happy word in Stampin' Up!'s Basic Gray ink. 
and I will use the sleeve on my shirt just to make sure I can get a nice good firm impression there on my misty lid. <clears throat> now that I have that all stamped out, I need to cut out my birthday word. And I decided I wanted to cut this out in gray. Spoiler alert again, I don't use the gray. I, I Gray is the neutral on this card. Gray should have looked awesome on this card. Gray didn't look awesome on this card. <laughs> I have gone ahead and, and die cut it anyway because I didn't know. There we go. So I have all of my pieces. I need to trim down my happy word strip. And um, it's not stamped exactly straight. And my Fiskars trimmer. Look at this. I'm just fidgeting with this word die. Like, Jenny, come on. Y you got this. <laughs> I wasn't exactly sure how I was going to put that together either. Um, there are a lot of parts of this card that I had a clear plan for, and obviously a lot of parts that I just did not. I did decide to go ahead and pull out my stamp, um, Simon Says Stamp, there we go, Sentiment Strip Dies, because I didn't stamp this happy word straight at all. And my Fisker trimmer needs a new blade, so I didn't want to try and, and fuss with that. I've got to get some new blades picked up. Every time I go to the store, I forget to get the blades. Every time. I will tape this sentiment strip die down with a piece of pa um, painter's tape that I did not take the stiff sticky off with my hand first, and it stuck really good to that paper and tore the dickens out of that piece of paper. Gratefully, I'm cutting it off anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Pull out a pair of scissors and trim off that end. I could have used that die to, you know, slid the, slid the die down and, and cut off that end, but scissors were right there. That was just easier. <clears throat> All right, moving on. I am going to put um, my card base into my scoreboard and score this at five and a half inches so that I can get a nice crisp fold. I score my cardstock because when you are folding it, especially this style, you're folding it against the fibers of the paper and sometimes it doesn't fold nice and clean. You get that kind of bumpy fold. If you score it first and kind of break up those paper fibers, that does not happen. Also, I like to use my bone folder to flatten out the edges and give it a nice clean fold. Okay, so here's my card base and here is my card front. And I am going to use my ATG gun. It's my double-sided, um, tape roll, double-sided tape, adhesive, words. <laughs> and I am going to line that card base up on the grid mat on my work surface so that I can eyeball line up that card front. Like I've said before, I don't measure lots of things. I just eyeball it. It's a handmade card. It's not supposed to be perfect. It's handmade with love and mistakes. So now I have my balloons and my happy word. And here's another part that I didn't really plan out. There's no strings on the balloons. Do they just float around in midair? It's not like they're coming out of a box or anything. Ah, oh, but I have this piece of gray cardstock and my guillotine trimmer off to the side of my, on my desk. So I just put my cardstock in there and cut some really skinny pieces of gray cardstock. This is a lightweight cardstock. I bought it for another project when my kids needed it for school. It's not real heavy duty, but it um, it works good for layering and it works perfect for this because I've got some super skinny little pieces of cardstock that I can then kind of curl with my bone folder to give the illusion of string. That's what I was going for. The illusion of string without the hassle of dealing with string. So now I've got my balloons and I have to get these um, strings attached. I have pulled out this really skinny, I think it's like eighth of an inch um, score tape, really strong adhesive. And I'm putting a little piece of score tape on the back of each of these balloons so that I can just stick that faux balloon string right down on top of it. And I put the tape on the front of the coral colored balloon. Yeah. Totally put the tape on the top of the balloon. Whatever, the top now becomes the back, right? <laughs> I am going to use my um, pokey tool here to pick off that um, backing paper 
and a bone folder to kind of break the fibers in the paper and give it a little bit of a, a twist and a curl. I'm not sure exactly what I thought that was necessary for either because they get stuck behind the word strip and then they don't curl at all. <laughs> Like I said, parts of this card, I really had an idea of where I wanted to go. You know, use the pattern paper and make the geometric kind of grid front. Um, the rest of it, not so much. Yeah, don't, don't know what I was thinking. And then I noticed that when I pulled the backing paper off this blue balloon, I had pulled the whole piece of tape off with it, <laughs> not just the backing paper. Yeah, you know, it's really funny that I, I, when I et, watch the videos and edit the videos, I, I think, do I really craft like this in real life? The answer is yes. I craft like this in real life. I make mistakes. I goof up. I fiddle around. I edit a lot of stuff out that you guys wouldn't want to see because it's like me just staring at it, trying to decide what I'm going to do with this thing I have now created on my desk. So yeah, this is a really good impression of me in real life. Okay, so we're going to put the balloons in that top left hand block. Um, I decided to adhere them with foam tape to kind of bump them off, give a little bit of dimension to this card because, you know, you need some dimension. Dimension is, dimension's how you, it makes the world go around. I don't know what the phrase is. Um, Laurel Beard says dimension is life, I think. So, yeah. We're going with foam tape. We're going to create all the dimension on all the things. <laughs> okay. My, my dog is looking in my office door. I'm not sure why he's looking in my office. She's looking in my office door. I am like her least favorite person in the house, but she's giving me sad eye through my office door. Ridiculous animal. <laughs> she's a cutie. Okay. I've got the balloons down on the front of my card. You guys, this is a rambling, rambling video. Sorry for that. I have got the balloons down and this is when I realized that curling up the cardstock was probably not necessary because now it's a pain in the hiney to get it to lay down so that I can put the sentiment on top of it. <laughs> Sorry, shenanigans. I'm just calling the shenanigan on this one. Okay. I pulled off a piece of that little um, eighth, inch, eighth inch score tape. I'm going to lay it right over the top of those balloon strings. At least they're holding still. <laughs> They're not curling up all over the place and I can add my sentiment to the top of the card. I am going to adhere the happy um, words word with um, foam tape as well. Pop it up just a little bit as well. And then I have to figure out how to get that birthday word attached to the card. Also, I want to hide that little piece of double sided tape. So, you know, the happy has to kind of go there. There's only one place it really can go. I'm going to hide that piece of tape holding the balloon strings down. And because the balloon strings are gray and the happy is stamped in gray and the mat is stamped in gray, that gray just was not working for me. So I, um, off screen, cut out that word in some coral cardstock, the same color as that balloon. And I'm decided I'm going to glue it to this little tiny scrap of gray cardstock that I trimmed down also off screen. See, I edit out a lot of stuff you guys don't want to watch me do because I'm sitting here looking at it like, Whoa. okay, <laughs> one thing about this word day, um, it has a little teeny tiny tittle to the eye, tiny, tiny, tiny tittle to the eye and it gets stuck in the die. Gratefully, I don't have to go looking for it, but it is itty bitty. All right. Using my reverse clamp tweezers, I am going to put that birthday word down on top of that gray piece of cardstock. I'm going to use the um, release paper from the foam tape to go over it just so I can push really hard and squeeze out some of the glue. <laughs> and then I'll have to take my finger over it and remove that glue anyway. Um, man, the things, <laughs> the things that you do. And I am going to adhere this gray stripe or the gray paper just flat down. I'm just going to adhere it with some glue right to the card front. I'm going to kind of offset it a little bit so that it goes more towards the right hand side of the card and adds just a little bit of movement to the front of my card. And then I am going to get that little teeny tiny tittle out of the die. I'm even going to show you it's on the tip of my finger there. See my index finger? You can't even see it. It is so 
tiny. I put a dot of glue on the paper and I put a dot of glue on my pokey tool so that I could get the piece of paper <laughs> off of my finger and onto my card. For real, y'all, I should have just skipped it because who's going to notice that that eye does not have its dot? Nobody's going to notice that. Overall, I was really pleased with how the card turned out. Um, like I said, I didn't have a plan of action other than use the pattern paper and make it a grid on the front. I wanted to make sure this was a card I could send to anybody that wasn't overly feminine or overly masculine. Um, I did decide it needed a little bit of glitter and my Wink of Stella pen was empty. So I pulled out a new Wink of Stella pen and had to get it going. And until you really get that moving, it's um, kind of a pain. It took me a hot minute to get all of these balloons all glitterified. And maybe adding glitter to, yes, glitterified is a word. It's a made up word, but it's a word. <laughs> and, and maybe glitter on a card isn't necessarily the best for a most a masculine card, but balloons are glittery. <laughs> okay, so here is the finished card. The only thing that is left to do is add a piece of copy paper to the inside of the card. This is my norm. This is what I do. That way I can use different colors of cardstock, not just white, for my card base and have a nice, crisp, clean place to write a message to the recipient of this card. Thank you so much for hanging in there with me today. I know it was a rough one. I really enjoyed working on the card and just playing with my pattern paper. I like how it came out. Here are a couple of other videos for you to watch and a subscribe button for you to click. Thanks so much for stopping by. Have a great day.